I said in the first half that um, earlier this week I went down to Felpham in Sussex, which is right by Bognor Regis, and um, that's where William Blake lived for a while. And uh, Rose Cottage, where he lived, is um, famously the place where he got arrested nearby um, for having an argument with a drunken sailor who later accused him of seditious comments and he was taken to Chichester Crown Court, but uh, fortunately released. And the pub where the drunken sailor had emerged from is the Fox. Um, so um, after seeing the cottage on a misty night, we popped into the Fox. So this is Toasting Blake. Rose Cottage breathed soft in winter dusk, harbouring the poet's ghost. Cold through from walking by the sea, we bade the little house goodbye, cross over to the fox, there in the snug bar, to raise a whiskey toast. Call down Blake's angels, while workmen drink as fast as he created verse. No songs of innocence here, just beer, good cheer and shelter from the frost. I'm going to do a couple from a other collection called um, Baltimore. This is a poem called Waiting for Henry, and um, there's a Henry in everyone's life. Um, Henry is that uh, friend who never shows up for an arrangement, and um, there are a few Henrys here tonight. Um, except they are, they're not here. They said they were going to come, but in the end, mm. they couldn't be asked. <laughs> Rumours begin. Henry's back in town. Days pass. Henry rings, says he might be at such and such a place, at such and such a time, on such and such a day. We go there anyway, stand around with drinks. Someone spots Henry. But it's not Henry, just someone who looks like Henry. Henry rings to apologise. He got caught up. There was a girl, a train was late. We forgive Henry. He is only as weak as the strongest among us. Henry threatens to come to a party. From an upstairs window we watch Henry's taxi arrive. He gets out, pays, remembers something, gets back in. We try to calculate how many years since we spoke to the physical Henry, pressed his physical flesh, stood him a drink. Once we saw him in the queue at Bob Dylan. There was a girl, there was a limousine, Henry melted away. We hear Henry's in Australia, or India, or Amsterdam. A card arrives without a stamp, it shows a white building, a red guard. Henry says he is getting his shit together. There was a girl, a plane was late, you know how it is. But we don't, we don't know how it is. This is why we love Henry, wherever he is. <laughs> a certain theme has uh, emerged tonight with um, I think Pete mentioned Blake, and this is another poem set in um, Bognor Regis, uh, featuring another artist who lived in the area. Um, as we were walking towards Felton, we passed the terraced house on the corner at Bognor Regis by the seafront, where James Joyce lived um, for a year in 1923. And um, it's up for sale, if anybody's interested, by the way. You can <laughs> go and buy Blake's house in Alexandra Terrace. Um, when I first came across this uh, the blue plaque thing that... Uh, James Joyce lived here, I had to write a poem to answer the question, why? This is James Joyce in Bognor Regis. What was James Joyce doing in a terrace by the sea, writing Finnegan's Wake in Bognor in 23? In an ancient town where beachcombers walk the sky, with a pier 1,000 feet long where old blues men come to die? And restaurants shut at six in respect of the setting sun, and all that is left by then is the drinking still to be done, or watching the crazies at crazy golf, arrested here if they merely cough. This is not the best place to be if you want to make sense of what you see at the sea. God knows what Joyce thought of pubs where barmaids pull Guinness so fast. Perhaps he just loved the way. The day seems to last, and last, and last, and last. I'm going to 
to conclude with a couple of poems from um, Dance Music. <coughs> Dance Music is an early collection, and this one is called Flesh. Flesh, it's the best, lots of it, nearness of flesh, warm huggy flesh, kissy flesh, electric fire, hot climb into bed next to flesh, bouncy first thing in the morning, flesh, flesh jittering in kitchen over cup of late for work, coffee, flesh busying through day, matter of fact flesh, efficient flesh, Wednesday lunchtime, okay, flesh, so, so, then flesh, flesh between tons of flesh on jam-packed flesh trucks, Sweating, bad-tempered, impatient flesh, flopping in front of telly, feet up flesh, longing for other half-flesh to appear in doorway, off a soothing cuppa. Oh, great flesh, kissy flesh, hold on tight to flesh, make everything all right again flesh, pink flesh, black flesh, lazy flesh, coming out of shower, smelling clean flesh. Don't your flesh and my flesh ever part? I want to dance naked with you till the ashes. <laughs> I'm going to, um, my final poem tonight is a poem about Scotland. And uh, before I perform the poem, I just wanted to talk for a minute or two about, um, about Dandy, the comic which also comes from Scotland. And this is the... Uh, this is the very last issue of Dandy. After 75 years, they've closed it down. It came out this month. You can probably get it on eBay for a lot of money now. It's going online, uh, isn't it? Sorry. The what? It's going, it's going online. Oh, yeah, it is, yeah. But the real thing was the comic no, that you got in your, your, your uh, greasy little mitts, I think. So, um, my favourite um, character in Dandy when I was getting it as a child was Black Bob, the Border Collie. And uh, Black Bob was out there in the Scottish Highlands with uh, Shepherd Andrew um, fighting against those who were rustling sheep and smuggling rum and um, I thought I'd show you an artist's approximation of what Black Bob may have looked like <coughs> So here we are and um, I hope you can all see that um, here, This little figure here is um, Andrew of course and, um, and this, I think you will find, is Black Bob. Black Bob, there. I'm not sure who this bitch is here. <laughs> so there you are. <laughs> OK, so the very first time I went to the uh, Scottish Highlands, I was looking out across the, uh, the hills with the green stuff on top and the brown stuff on top and the purple heathery stuff that covers the hills. <laughs> and I had a feeling I'd been here before, although I knew I had a sense of deja vu. But as I looked across these hills, I realised that what I was looking at was Black Bob country. Yeah. This is Black Bob country. You can see him if you look hard. Out there, tail fierce against the wind, rounding his sheep, regarding Shepherd Andrew with real dog love. Black Bob just a dog. Never one for the whiskey, though there are 150 to choose from in this neck of the woods. Never one for the whiskey, but fierce and brave and loyal. I could smell your sleep damp Atlantic swept coat right through the pages of the dandy. Black Bob, Black Bob, you put your nose to the wind. Another adventure began. Hey, Bob, 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 Bob. Chase you through childhood, never caught up. You're wild and fierce, and just much nicer than Batman. Yay. Yay.